Welcome to Stock Talk with Nico Criticos. Today we're going to be going through Etsy stock. And this is one I just started researching a couple days ago, but we are going to get started on this. And um, I do not have any position in this stock yet, but it is pretty interesting. So if you don't know, Etsy makes these, um, Etsy makes products like this that you can see here. And these are, uh, it's just a lot of customized things, a lot of things people make at home that you can't really get anywhere else. It's, uh, they have a lot of vintage items. They have a lot of just, you know, customizable things that people make at their houses, okay? And so the stock price right now in the last three months is down over 40%. Um, earlier in December or in November, it hit highs of what, $300? Yeah, $307 a share. And now it's down to 145. So we're going to use my checklist again to see is the stock a good buy or not. And first thing on the list, it's going to get a check because the stock is down. Um, is the stock having revenue and net income increases? Well, if we look here, we can see that, yes, they have been increasing revenues year after year. And then in 2020, because of the pandemic, they had a huge break. They did over $1.7 in revenue. And uh, net income has also been growing a little bit. And so those are both going to get a check. Then next up, uh, we have healthy forward price to sales and a forward price to earnings. I gave a yes on both of these because a 42, not only have they come down dramatically from where they were four months ago, but if you compare them to the competitors, they also are looking very nicely too. So if, if you look here, this is Etsy, Amazon, Shopify, and eBay. And Etsy has a forward price earnings of 42 with EPS growth expected for 14% this year. And then a forward price to sales of seven and 20% revenue growth expected for this year. The return on invested capital is also not too bad. 22% is a good number. And you do have Shopify and eBay and a little bit higher, but still 22% is not bad. Um, if, you, if you look at these other ones, I think that Shopify is probably the least attractive, which is actually a bit concerning because I actually just bought this stock uh, last week. So um, they do have a really high return on invested capital, but if you, and the price to sales, the revenue growth looks nice here because the price to sales of 15 and a 30% revenue growth is pretty good, but 105 pr pr uh, price to earnings with 9% EPS growth does not look good. Um, I do think Amazon is trading at a decent discount here. This is a pretty good spot to buy in. And then eBay, that one is, you know, that, that's not really going to move much. That's not a big growing company. So that one is not as important. Um, if we keep moving on, we can see, so those are both going to get a yes. Then the, and the other thing I look for here is one of my other metrics is whatever the price to earnings is, I want, or price to sales, let's say price to sales of seven, I want the revenue growth expected for next year to be at least twice that. And they're expected to have 20% revenue growth. So that's definitely a good sign. Definitely looks undervalued from a, a revenue metric. Then innovative or emote this, I put yes, because this can be based off a couple different things. One, um, are, do they have a unique business model? Do they have a, a lot of users? Do they have a certain positioning in the market that is hard to replicate? And I think, yes, they do. Because if you look down here, we can see that they have about 86 million buyers roughly last year. And they also own Reverb, which is a pretty much like a, it's the same type of business. It's, it's like an eBay, but it's just for instruments and stuff like that. Then we have Depop, that is a, that's for reselling closed or clothes. And then you have Elo7. This is a e-commerce company that they bought out that operates in Latin America. And so that's, they have, you know, they have different brands that they own. They're, they're competing in different markets. And then, and that's also why they're going to get a yes for a growing industry because e-commerce is growing and they're, these are all growing companies in different growing industries. And then are they innovative? I would say yes, because they are unique in the way that they're different from Amazon or eBay because this, um, let's say we type in like, let's see, let's look at, I don't know, something like this. Um, if you look at something like this, you can see this is very unique. You're not going to find this type of stuff in a lot of places. 
So that kind of gives them an edge as well. And then if we keep moving, return on invested capital of 22%, that's a little bit, that's lower than some of their competitors, but still not bad. Uh, healthy margins. This one, if we look at their margins, we can see they have gross margin of 73% and a profit margin of 22%. That Those are very good numbers. And then we have healthy cash flow. This one I also gave a yes because we can see operating cash flow has been growing nicely the last couple of years. And how, how we saw earlier, the pandemic really did speed up a lot of demand and business for this company. So that's why you saw a huge, you know, it almost, what it, it more than three X and now it's coming down a little bit, which is understandable. And it's not necessarily a bad sign. And here's another thing, like you can see, as, so they claim in their presentation here that their TAM across all the areas they compete in United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Germany, Australia, France, and India, they're claiming that whole TAM is $1.7 trillion. And that seems like a lot. Um, the United States this year is expected to do $875 billion of e-commerce revenue. So I don't know, they're definitely going after a big market and there's definitely a, a good amount of space there for them to compete. And if they can just get a, a you know, five or 10% of that market, that will add up to a lot of money for them. Um, and if you look here, you can see their end cash position. It's, you know, kind of fluctuated, but it's, you know, year after year, it's normally going up. Just the, the pandemic year was definitely a, uh, an outlier for them. Um, if we keep moving on, we can see, I put diverse re revenue streams. So they, they really, the way they make their money is by when you go on here, they charge 20, every time somebody lists something on this website, they get 20 cents. Okay. Etsy gets, they charge a 20 cent fee. Then they get 5% of the total sale. So um, you, have the, you have those two ways to make money. And I think they have, there might be one other, oh, I think they, the other way they make money is by when people pay to promote their item. And I mean, that's, that's how most of these e-commerce platforms make money, but I, I'm going to give that a yes. And as well as it's nice to see them diversifying into these other businesses. I know Depop is pretty popular in the, um, you know, just like the fashion world and reselling clothes. Elo 7, I don't know a lot about, but they're saying that's a good buy for the Latin American industry. And then Reverb, I know a lot about because I am, uh, I play, you know, I'm into music and I play guitar and stuff. So I've, you know, I've shopped on Reverb before and I hear a lot of people talk about it. So that's definitely a good business to own too. Then if we keep moving, we can see the balance sheet, the long-term assets and liabilities don't look good, but the current ratio does look good. They have more current assets and liabilities and equity has been increasing. Um, if you want to look closer to what the balance sheet looks like, you can see here that... Balance, see, let's see, we'll let you, so equity has been growing, that looks nice, but then we try to break down current assets is more than twice current liabilities, that's great, but long-term assets, 2.4 is a little bit under their liability, so that's not a great sign. Um, then we have a share buyback, no, they, well, even if they did have a share buyback, it's, the bottom line is that the share, well, so the share, let's see, share change year over year, they added 3.8% shares. Um, you know, it's, that's all, sometimes it's understandable because there's, there's stock awards they give out to the executives and stuff. And sometimes they issue more shares to raise money, but 3.8% is still moving in the wrong direction and they don't pay a dividend. So that's going to get a no. And then big money or insiders interested, we can see which in, we can see which hedge funds own it right here. And that is so. Let's see. We have what? Ninety-two percent of the shares are held by institutions, and Vanguard has two point eight billion. BlackRock two point four billion. So that's definitely a good sign. Let's see. Is yeah. And um, then we can we can even go one step further and check what the insiders are doing. I think I already looked at this, and it wasn't anything spectacular but it'll show you here which uh what the insiders have been buying and selling the last six months 
and that's going to be see so this past month december 2021 not you know there was more sells than there was buys um really if anything this past the past six months have been mostly selling there hasn't really been any made in, in september they bought a little bit but i don't know i think i i, I would hope that this that in january the executives are buying um but we will see what happens there uh, we could even i think we can even, we can check too what the other investors are doing see so you can say it's last month most people are selling i mean this is the sellings across all stocks that's that's the other thing you got to consider is right now we're in a bear market so every single stock is beaten down but most of them are beaten down huge from where they were three months ago but Overall, this gets a 14 out of 16 score, which is phenomenal. Actually, most companies do not score that high. So how I said, I don't have a, pos a position in this yet, but I, I mean, I'm not against it. Really, the only reason is because I've spent so much money these past couple months buying into all these other companies. I'm into like 30 different stocks now. So that's the only reason. But this is, I, I wouldn't, I would give this a thumbs up. I would, um, you know, maybe if it fell a little bit more, I think if it came back down to around like, 120 i think 120 would be a really good spot to buy in but this 140 150 level is definitely not too bad um but yeah that is all for today thank you for watching and i will see you guys in the next video